get Cab Calloway on it? Can you get it? That's my patty way she's going to be on it. By the way, how is your father? But I want to know what happened. Does it bother you? To the break room, classic film fans, it's tea time for a coffee break. Welcome back to the coffee house. I hope you have your coffee. I have mine. And I am using the mug I never ever use um, as you as I talked about like display pieces I never use this cup it's it was actually a joke around the house how I never <laughs> use this cup this is strictly strictly for show strictly for uh, display but with the film festival stay at home edition uh, this last weekend I decided to on that rare occasion to go ahead and use it and I just felt okay for one last time before it goes back on display mode permanently I'll I'll use it one more time for 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 our coffee talk our coffee break um, with each other this week and I want to say a special thank you to Kate Gabrielle if you don't follow her on Twitter you need to um, for for that little extra boost of encouragement for me to do this week's this week's Fashion Friday as I was going to scrap it all together this week, but it's messages saying, you know, don't, it does feel like a, like a conversation with a friend, a coffee break with a friend. Thank you so much. So I am here for our coffee, our coffee, cinema coffee break, our coffee talk. This week for Fashion Friday, I am going to take a break from doing a specific piece that is inspired by one particular actor or a particular film and showcase instead, take you guys back into my workroom and introduce you to what I call my wardrobe wall. I pulled some garments from my wardrobe closet and put them on the garment rack that I want to share with you guys. I do have this piece on the mannequin because it was on the rack, one of the garments that I had pulled, but it's best shown on someone or on a mannequin. One of my favorite pieces and one of the most difficult pieces to make, I will show you the sketch to this when we go into my workroom so you can get the full effect of it as well as have a full photo for you guys to see of the actual dress. Before we get to that, I, I think I've received more feedback from last week's video than I have since we started. I appreciate you guys sharing with me what your comfort watches have been. Just like my coffee talk buddy Anne Marie, she told me that right now she's currently like in a telly mode. She's doing The Simpsons and The Carol Burnett Show and I think she said I dream of Jeannie so I get that. That was, that was totally me last year. I went through the nanny. I know I'm super late to the to the party, um, but I was watching the reruns last year. I think it was like around the holidays. It just wasn't going fast enough for me <laughs> when they were airing them. So I ended up having to get the DVD set and just watching it from beginning. I was like, I need, no, I need to watch this from beginning to as, as far as end as possible. And then I finally, I, like, I finally finished all of the nanny straight from beginning to end, as well as gentlemen prefer blondes group. We, we unite. I received so many responses on the gentlemen prefer blondes uh, movie in general, as well as my Jane Russell dress that I showcased last week with my Fred and Ginger. Thank you so much for the compliments on both of those dresses and just seeing how many uh, gentlemen prefer blonde fans there are, which, you know, you sort of know, but just to hear it um, as, as as feedback to, to hear so many people, I love that film and I love the dress you didn't, you know, so thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to find other gentlemen prefer blonde fans like in our in our fan club. Which brings me to like the biggest question that I received the most response from this week. This week was my mom's birthday. Um, so uh, I posed the question that I had been thinking of for quite like, like maybe for some reason the, the, the question popped into my head for like maybe two weeks prior. And I kept like at random times thinking about it. It was a question she'd always ask whenever we would watch the women. And it was, who do you see, like, who do you picture Stephen Haynes to be? And for me, when when she first asked me that question, immediately Robert Montgomery popped in my mind because that's who, that's who I would always think of whenever I watched it anyway. And I think that stemmed a little bit from No, no More Ladies with him and Joan Crawford. And you know, I don't, I don't do spoilers. That's not my jam. So I, 
I'm, I don't want to say, if you've seen the film, you'll know what scene I'm talking about. But there is a scene in the film where Robert Montgomery does a bit of acting um, in his, in his, he's, he's, he's going into his remorseful scene and she's comforting him. So I always saw that uh, whenever I would watch the women. So that's, that's who I had picked. And for my mom, it was always William Powell. And I think for her, it was William Powell because the way she described it to me, when Norma Shear, when she, you know, when she outstretches her hands, she said, I always imagined William Powell was on the other side of that. So I'm not sure if she envisioned him all the way through the film, but in that particular moment, and I guess that's what struck her to ask the question, like, who do you see? Who do you envision him to be? So for her, it was William Powell. And for us, in this rare occasion, it was like, yes, I know he's described as being fair haired, um, an, an engineer, but I still saw who I saw and she saw who she saw. But I received so many notifications between the responses I received personally from my actual post and the retweet with comments where other people were like posting their answers on top of my post, you know, onto their pages. Between that and the other, I don't think my phone has ever received that many notifications ever. Not since I think my my question of who was your first classic film uh, crush, your 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 film crush. I don't think I've received that, and I don't even think I received that many then. So I'm going to share some of the 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 answers that I received because some of them I never thought of. Some of them I I don't know if I could I can see, and some of them I thought were were pretty darn good. Like, why didn't I think of that? It did air. I, I didn't even, with the with the film festival stay at home edition, I didn't even, I was so wrapped up in that. I didn't even catch that the women was coming on, on, on my mom's birthday. So that night, you know, I tried to watch it. Although like I watch it all the time anyhow, and recently just really sat down and watched it because it's been so long. I usually just put it in the, in the player and just let it play as a background watch. And you know how you like go through the routine, you you act it out as you're doing whatever you're doing. Um, so I tried to envision some of these that you guys gave to see if I can pick one. I think the, the, the first answer that I received was from Solitary Confinement. And then my, my TCM20 buddy, Sarah Joy Harmon, she, she was the second, which, and they both had sort of the same uh, person in mind, Jean Raymond, which I hadn't thought of. And I kept thinking of that and I was like, okay, okay, I can, I can, I can see that. I can see that. So that was a good one. The best one for me, I think was Peter Lorre, the, the person who suggested Peter, Peter Lorre. And here's why I'm going to defend that. The Constant Nymph. I remember the first time I saw The Constant Nymph, the, the Charles Boyer version, not the Brian Ahern version. When I saw the Charles Boyer adaptation, it, Peter Lorre with Brenda Marshall was a thing. Like I was, I was so hooked on that. Like I almost, almost forgot about Charles Boyer. I was so into Peter Lorre and Brenda Marshall being married. I loved seeing Peter Lorre um, as, in that role as that character. So when Peter Lorre was name was dropped, I was kind of like, hmm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to. Uh, erase that name off my list completely. That I'm, I'm leaving it there. I kind of like that. So that one was interesting. Um, French Up Tone, which was given by the dame upstairs, Diana. She she gave that and, and got some cosigns on that. French Up Tone, um, yeah, you know, that, that kind of works. We're just going to leave that. <laughs> We're going to leave that there. There was a lot of, there was a lot of Clark Gables. I personally, I don't, I I don't think I see it, although I can kind of see a wife versus secretary-esque. Um, if you haven't seen that film, I don't want to give anything away. But if you have, you know, it's like, I don't know. I don't know if I can see Clark Gable, but I was kind of thinking wife versus secretary kind of ish. If you've seen the film, you know what the ish is like. Mm, okay. Um, John Boyles. I thought that was a good, I thought that one was good. I didn't think about that. I got a lot of Frederick March. There was a lot of Frederick March and Brian Ahern. There was, there was, a, you know, anyone who gives Brian Ahern, you're okay in my book. That means you're, you're a classic film fan. Um, new Brian Ahern. I, I don't even know how it was introduced to him. 
I think, you know what? I think it was Joan Crawford. Him with Joan Crawford. Um, that I think it was their film. What is it? I Live My Life. I Live My Life. Um, 1935, I believe it is. It was that film that caught my attention to Brian O'Hearn. And then was hooked. Then we saw him on, I think he was like guest hosting for Robert Q. Lewis and um, for the names the same. I think it's been a while since I've seen it because they used to run those reruns all the time. I think like at two o'clock in the morning or something. And we were like there every night to heck with you have to get up in the morning. Like we were there every night looking at him. And when he guest host uh, for in for Robert Q. Lewis, we loved his kind of no nonsense. Like when the time was up, the time was up. no, no, like that's that, that's enough time and and you know that you're giving too much information like we kind of liked that so that even that made me, us more Brian O'Hearn fans so anyone who names Brian O'Hearn you're my kind of people like we're good Preston Foster I think Lost in Time uh, recommended Preston Foster Hollywood yesterday recommended I loved how I love how she said um my mental casting department because I have a mental casting department too. I think every classic Hollywood fan has a mental casting department. But Dick Powell, now that's not someone I ever thought of. Like I never, that never entered my mind. Uh, Cause a lot of the answers were MGM answers, like people who worked at MGM. But I don't think I ever branched out outside of MGM and I never thought of Dick Powell. So, so good one, good one Hollywood yesterday. I, I, I don't know if I can see it, but I, I would love to, next time I watch it, I'm gonna try to fit Dick Powell in there because that would be, you know, like really breaking away. But, you know, then he became like film noir, you know, tough guy, uh, crossover. Randolph Scott received a good amount of those. I like it. I like Randolph Scott. I mean, I mean, I like Randy. I, we call him Randy. Um, but I'm just saying I like I like the I like the idea. Walter Pigeon, Chester Morris, Gary Cooper, Douglas Fairbanks, um, Herbert Marshall, Ray Milland. I don't know if I could see Ray Milland, and I like Ray Milland. So go go somewhere else with the witty comments on Ray Milland. I like Ray Milland. And then Cary Grant, I only saw like one time, and in a sense, I was shocked I saw him at all. And then. In another sense, I was shocked I only saw him one time. It was like a catch-22. While I, you know, I told you guys, that was my first classic film crush before I knew what a crush was. Like, I love Cary Grant. And yet I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I'm still like, I don't, I don't know if I could see, I don't know. I don't know. Leslie Howard got a lot of mentions. Joel McRae got, did somebody say Joel McRae? Got a lot of mentions. John Barrymore. Um, did I say Frederick Douglass, M Melvin, um, Melvin Doug, I mean, uh, Frederick Douglass, Frederick March, Melvin Douglass. I think I mentioned those, Robert Young. And then Alan Ladd also made the list. I think just one person mentioned Alan Ladd. Um, you know, at 1939, he had not reached his peak yet. So I don't know if I could co-sign on that on Alan Ladd. Not to say if maybe later, if, if maybe if the women was made later, um, it, it could have could have worked 1939. I don't know if I could see it yet, but I do like that in 1939, he plays in a film, Rules of the Sea, and he plays Colin Farrell as a character. <laughs> but I, I love that his character's name is, is Colin Farrell. Like, I was like, wait, what? Is, did, is that Colin Farrell? And, but it's, it's Douglas Fairbanks Jr. with Margaret Lockwood. And you know what? If you haven't seen that film, there, there's a scene where she's where she's buttering the bread and then like she has the loaf of bread she butters it and then she slices it and then goes to the next butters it and then she slices it and I'm like hey you got something I always when I get a like a solid loaf bread I I slice it and then I butter it but she buttered it it was like a like like off the assembly line. I like how she did that. I'm gonna next time. I'm gonna try that. So anyhow, that was that was my my little uh, coffee break for the women sharing some of the answers that I received. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, please do so, uh, and and share with me who you think Stephen. Who is your Stephen every time that you watch the women? All right. So here is the wardrobe wall. As you can see, it's a lot going on. 
Um, and you guys have to be special because I'm using my actual camera, which I don't do for, for my weekly videos. I just use my cell phone. Very seldom do I actually use my film camera, what I do to shoot film. Uh, so you guys are special, but this is what I want to focus on, which is the garment rack. Um, and since I'm my own cameraman, okay, the purple was not super, <laughs> supposed to be up there. But we'll get to that later, you guys. If you follow me long enough, you you recognize the purple garment up there. But since I am my own, oh my gosh, wait, I see the Corleones. Yes, I do have, I do have a, a Corleone familia with Fredo, Vito, Michael, and Sunny. Yes, I I told you, like films influence my life, not just my work, my life. Um, but this is what I want to get to, and that's the actual garment rack that I pulled the clothes from. So if you can just give me a bit of a break, since, since I am my own cameraman, and I'm going to pull the wardrobe rack out a little bit, and we're going to go through it. Okay, so I'm not quite sure if I'm in the shot or not, because my, I'm my own camera woman. I'm my own camera woman, but it really doesn't matter, because it's not about me. It's the clothes that I want to show you guys. Um, the, the purple you might recognize. Uh, it was not supposed to be up here, as I as I already mentioned, a piece that I, I, I made by hand. Uh, I probably will show you guys this this picture uh, when I edit the video, but I had to make this all by hand. This is for a different show entirely. This was, uh, I have both of them on here, if you can see it, the tops for the dames for my Cal Calloway-inspired uh, show. So these were the tops that they that they wore. I actually wore this skirt for a show, a theatrical production. I had to do this all by hand, and let me tell you, it feels really, really good on. It is one of my favorite pieces, and I also have, I have one in black. Did I, oh, yes. I didn't know if I put it up here or not. I have one in black, uh, but these, these two are like, I don't know how many films, classic films I had to watch to get through this, but I have to I had to do these all by hand. I always, I often get that question, how long did it take you? I lost track of time. That's how, that's how long it took me. I lost track of time. I like this one. Um, this is called Keys. As you may know by now, all of my garments have some sort of name to them, and this one is called Keys. I, I'm sure I have a picture of me wearing this dress because I actually wore this dress. Uh, like piano keys. And I think this one you really have to see on to appreciate it because each uh, section it was layered, supposed to be a layered dress and it goes like that all the way down. The back is also a continu continuous draping of the front material, the, the uh, top of the material. I included this one, the silver one, because my mom um, wore this during uh, we made this, she wore this during my Gentlemen Prefer Blondes dinner that I had. I told you guys last week I had a birthday a themed Gentlemen, uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes dinner party and she wore that and I, I just thought that was sweet. So I included that on the rack. Oh, the Derby. This is what I call the Derby. This was inspired by His Girl Friday. Hildy John Johnson. There's the front. It's the pinstripe pen pencil skirt. But then you get to the back, and it's a bustle. And I, when it's on, I really, I really fluff this one up to make it as big and dramatic as I can. And the top that goes with it, there is a blouse that goes underneath it that's made out of the same lace material. But I actually have that. I'm using that for something else. As I was working on the Society before quarantine um, for the script that I have written for the society. I was using that as a demo piece for Victoria, which I think, I don't know if you can, if you can see it from here, but if you've seen my animatic reel for the society, this will look familiar to you because this is the piece that I had sketched out for Victoria, although it's named Gwendolyn. It's a long story. So if you've seen my my animatic this will look familiar and if you haven't seen my animatic watch it and and then that will look familiar so that's right now where the blouse to this one is but it's made out of the same material uh, as the cravat and there's the back of it so this is this is called the derby and it's inspired by Hilary Johnson anytime any place anywhere <laughs> to know me is to know that I am a bow person I love bows I 
I don't know why. So these are the pants we call elephant pants. I know I have a picture of this because I used it in my theatrical production. To appreciate it, you have to really see it on to appreciate it, but this is the back of it, the bow, and it's again, it's something like, it's it's really fluffed up in the front, like this is, this goes around the neck, and the way that it's made, it just kind of crosses all the way to the front until it snaps in the back with the bow, and it drapes down over the elephant pants, what we call elephant pants, um, but that's my pink dress. I think I don't I think this is the only one I don't really have a name for. I didn't have a name for. This one was like on the cuff. One of those fabrics that I just had, didn't know what to do with it, and just started working the mannequin, like what can I do? And came up with this. But I don't think I have a name for it. I need to name her. There's a term we use in our family called rough dry <laughs> when, it, when something hasn't been steamed or or ironed. And this one has been packed in my wardrobe closet because the size of it is so profound, so forgive the rough dry uh, of, of it. I actually got the inspiration from this from a 1960s publication uh, that I, I was going through, and I was like, ah, snap, like it. And so this was created. Again, to see it on is to appreciate it. So. I, I will show a picture that I have of this uh, on, and to see to see some walk someone walk away, it is it is like a midnight, like a storm. It is it is I love it. This is one of my my favorite. This might look familiar if you've seen a few Fashion Fridays back. It might look a little bit like the Cab Calloway uh, suit because <laughs> it's 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 just it's just one done in black, just a slightly different take on it. So there's the front and the back with tails because this one went with, ta -da, ta da this is one of my favorite pieces, guys. These are the pants. And like I told you, I have a flair for bows and bustles. This is the back. So it has both. Um, I can get it up there. The bow and the back is very dramatic on. And the bustle, which when I have it on, like I really fluff it up and make, and it has, and it also has a train to, if, if, if the bustle and the bow isn't enough, we have the train to make it official. So that's all we're gonna show you this week from the wardrobe wall in the workroom. So I hope you guys enjoyed the brief tour and we're gonna take it back to Fashion Friday Cinema Coffee. All right, so if you see an edit, like a, a edit cut, it's because I've been, I feel like I've been sitting here for five minutes waiting for, there, there is an, a helicopter. Uh, hovering somewhere over and I'm sure you can hear it but I've been sitting here for so long trying to wait for it to pass and it's not passing so I'm I'm going to hopefully talk over it hopefully it's not that much of a distraction uh, but just wanted to say I hope you guys are continuing to be safe and well please get a refill on your coffee and, and share the, this, this video with a friend, share the link with a friend and have another coffee break on me. I'm also going to be sharing with you uh, a link to one of my cinema coffee pieces below on Sabrina, which I didn't even realize that is like one of my comfort watches that I haven't watched in a while until um, my coffee talk friend Anne Marie had posted something about uh, Sabrina a few weeks ago and I just looked at it this morning that's why I brought it up I just looked at it this morning and I'm uh, with my DVDs and I'm like oh Sabrina I still haven't and I you know what the Sabrina cinema coffee piece is one of the favorite like I, I loved writing that one I really enjoyed writing that one so I still I need to I need to make that a priority I need to the, to put that in the DVD player and watch that as my comfort watch so I'm gonna put a link to that so you can have another coffee break on me while you read that piece and revisit Sabrina. So until then, be safe, be well, stay healthy, and let them find out you're a home girl. Stay home. So long, ladies. And by the way, there's a name for you ladies, but it isn't used in high society, outside of a kennel. <laughs>